Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to another video. So, so far we have cleaned up the geometry and we have also split it into, you know, useful boundaries on which we are going to be measuring the drag and uh, down forces. So, um, the next thing that I want to do is create a virtual wind tunnel. But before I do that, I kind of wanted to show you a particular component that I have not discussed so far. Basically the tires. So, if you enable the edges on the tires, you can see that there is this particular flat region. Why is this included? Because no tire looks like that, right? Well, the answer is quite simple. So in a wind tunnel, so if I open up one note and uh, if I draw a wind tunnel, which is basically a box, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the tire so that you can get some perspective. So a tire is basically going to look like a circle, correct? Now, when you're doing CFD, you cannot have two parts touch each other. At least in Converge, uh, as of 2.3, you cannot do that, right? So what you have to do is, so if you want the tire to be a perfect circle, then there needs to be a very minimal gap where a computational mesh is going to be created, which means flow can actually take place. This is going to be bad because in real life, the tire actually touches the ground. And to model that, what we are actually going to do is, we are going to do the same thing but instead we are going to delete this particular portion so let me just delete this guy right so this is what we are going to be doing right so we are kind of doing a boolean operation and this way we are modeling the geometry more accurately and because of this you actually have this flat portion right now what we need to do is we need to delete this flat portion and when we create the virtual wind tunnel, which is the box, it needs to perfectly interface with this particular gap. And that's going to be a challenge for us. So to start with, I need to delete these guys, right? So how do I do that? I can go to repair, delete. And my first strategy is that it looks fairly straight. So I can use the angle method. But if I do that, you can see that the entire tire is getting selected, which I don't want. So what can I do here? I can go ahead and create a boundary fence around that particular patch and get rid of it but that doesn't seem optimum. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this angle parameter and reduce it, right? So I'm going to make this into a smaller number, right? If this is made into a smaller number, then Convert Studio is going to pick less curvature, right? So the curvature cannot be too much. So let, so my expectation is that with an angle of phi, I should be able to select this. There you go, perfect. Now this is a number that I kind of played with and found. If I use 10 degrees and if I try to click, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, right? So you kind of have to play with the number that you want and uh, you know make sure that you are selecting all the components, right? All the four pieces. And let's just delete this. I'm using the shortcut key D to do that. So when you do this, you're going to end up with a set of open edges. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to measure the average vertex locations of all these open edges. Now, if these were all in a perfect plane, then the Z coordinate of all these vertices, right? Because Z represents the vertical coordinate. Now, if these points are all on the same plane, then the Z coordinate should be the same. So let's first uh, look at average of vertex locations. So you can see that it's 1.1612 E minus two, and there's a negative sign. So that's about negative 1.16 centimeters, right? So that's the distance between this point and the origin. So, okay, but this is the average. So how about the individual holes? Well, you can test a few random points. So instead of using open edge, just select any and just pick a single vertex, right? If I select any random vertex, and if I'm measuring the coordinate, you can see that the Z coordinate is perfectly matching. So the last number here is the Z coordinate. This is the X coordinate, Y coordinate, and the Z coordinate. You can see that it's actually matching pretty well, which indicates that this particular hole is planar, meaning all the vertices of that open edge basically have the same Z coordinate. The X and Y are going to be different. We're talking only about the Z coordinate. So similarly, I'm testing it here as well, you know, just pick a random location and make sure that you do this test. Because if this test fails, that means uh, your car might be misaligned. And be careful while picking points. So for example, initially when I zoomed in, I selected this point, but Converge actually picked the wrong point, right? So I have to zoom in, make sure I select the right point and click apply. So you can see that the coordinates are perfectly matching. So with this information, I'm ready to draw the box. So what is our strategy? Well, if this is my car, I'm going to basically draw a virtual wind tunnel, which is basically a box. 
my origin is kind of somewhere here and the length of my car if you basically look at it i think it's uh, 2.5 meters approximately right lx represents the length of the car and it's 2.5 meters so what i'm going to do is in the front in the upstream i'm going to provide a distance of 5l so 5 times 2.5 which is going to be 7.5 meters and that's the distance between the inflow boundary and the starting point similarly from this point to the rear end I'm going to be providing a value of 10 times the length of the car which in this case is going to be 25 meters so from here to here it's 25 meters now this distance ideally needs to vary depending upon the flow conditions now since this is an FSAE car we will be testing it out at relatively low intake velocities so the wind tunnel does not have to be as huge as say a formula one car all right so this is going to be a wind tunnel setup and in terms of the height i think having a 2.5 meter height should be enough but you know that is something we can change easily so for now uh, the total length is going to be 25 plus 7.5 which is 32.5 meters when you look at the car from the front the width of the wind tunnel is going to be 5 meters so what we are going to do is we are going to calculate all these points right you know you can measure them easily and when you calculate the points you can create vertices and with those vertices we can create faces and finally create the wind tunnel now remember the distance between the origin and the bottom most point of the wheel is roughly 1.16 centimeter right so that is going to be the lowest value for uh, for the y coordinate all right so with that in mind let's create the points so first what i'm going to do is i'm just going to keep the car in kind of an isometric view so that you can see the origin so you can kind of see that the origin is between the two front tires right if i zoom out you can kind of see that but at least in this view you can see that the origin is here the z axis is penetrating out um, if you want a better picture go to view options and maybe hide the body and now you can see the origin a bit more clearly right 